Hooray! I bought a new truck. Twice. So, long story short, I wound up buying this GMC 2500 HD AT4 Sierra because I could not get a hold of the original truck that I was looking for. And this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It is a dang near perfect truck aesthetically. The lights across the top, the front, it's just a commanding presence, if I can use that terminology, coming down the road. People just get out of your way when you're driving this truck. And let me show you the interior real quick. Now, it's a tad bit dirty because, you know, uh, I don't buy trucks to, to just sit. I actually work with my truck, but this interior is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, tons, of, tons of little details and stitching and little outlays and this magnificent screen that's over here and all of this functionality that you could not believe. So you may be wondering, if that's the case, then why did you say twice? Well, it's because I'm going to buy another one tomorrow. Now, when I say I'm buying another one tomorrow, I don't mean another, like, second GMC truck. I'm actually driving up to pick up the original truck that I wanted to get, the Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. It just took two years for them to finally get around to, you know, getting numbers up and prices down enough to where I could consider getting one. Uh, and I did find somebody that's going to take, give me a good enough trade-in on this vehicle uh, with down payment so that the only thing I'm really losing is a couple of months of payments on this one but um, the, the main reason I'm getting rid of it uh, and, and swapping to the Toyota is because there's just a couple of things with this truck um, that I just can't really live with uh, long term and I'll go over them uh, and let you know uh, starting now now, real quick, I just want to point out to anybody who's looking at buying one of these trucks, GMC Sierras are awesome. It, this, this truck is fantastic for what it was designed to do. Uh, it is a heavy-duty work truck, which means it is geared to work truck. The engine is geared for work. The suspension, the transmission, everything on this truck is made to work. It's designed that way. So if you're getting a truck and you're like, hey, this will be a nice truck for, you know, a three-hour trip to see the grandchildren, uh, no, that's not what this is designed to be. So, uh, but uh, just out of the gates, if you're thinking about buying one of these, these are awesome trucks. I'm not knocking it at all. I just want to give you the reasons why I'm getting rid of mine. So issue number one, I purchased the 2500 AT4 HD not the regular 1500 Sierra AT4. Had I have purchased that, I probably wouldn't be trading this in on another vehicle, but the 2500 being built as a work truck, as I said before, is way high. I don't know if it comes through on the camera angle here, but this is a very, very tall, lifted style truck. And I am not a very tall lifted style guy i am very short of stature as my friends and family will greatly tell you so uh getting up into this is not an easy effort for me uh, it literally requires a leap and a grab onto this handle just to get into the truck and that's something that uh, anybody who's short of you know six five is probably going to deal with with this so that's issue number one. Issue number two is the gear shift is right here on the 2500. On the 1500, it's down here where this little empty spot is. There's a, the gear shifter is down here on the 1500. On the 2500, it's up here. And that doesn't seem like a big deal until you have to interact with the infotainment system here. Because once you shift this into drive, the gear shift is right in the way. It's very difficult to reach the other stuff. As you're driving, you have to kind of reach behind to, to get to those things there. This is an example of what I was talking about with the gear shift knob. Uh, 
from this perspective, if you look, it's in the way of everything, right? I mean, I, you can't even, the, the screen for the map down at the bottom left shows you, you know, your proximate ETA and the speed limit and all like that, and you can't even see it. Now, to be fair, you do have all of these groovy little things on your steering wheel that handle 99% of the stuff that, you, that you're going to need, and it's got this really cool heads-up display, which I hope is coming through there, uh, that handles a whole bunch of this stuff. So, you know, it's not that you're always reaching over there, but if you ever do have to get in here while you're driving, uh, you know, go into the home screen to, you know, flip through things and look at look at camera angles and stuff like that, this, steer, this gear shift does get in your way, and it doesn't seem like it, but it's really, really kind of a pain in the butt. So, anyway, that's reason number two. Reason number three on this truck, as I've said a number of times, this is a good truck for what it's designed to be. What it's designed to be is a work vehicle, which means it is geared really, really low. If you're going down a hill or up a hill, uh, the transmission, the 10-speed transmission, is geared such that it stays in lower gears uh, far longer than you would in, you know, a traditional regular vehicle because the truck is designed to be towing things. So you're going to need that low-end torque and all that power. It's kind of a pain in the butt when you're coming down a driveway to the barn or our driveway up there uh, coming from, from the road to our house. Uh, it's kind of a pain. It's like driving in low gear all the time, and it, it just drives me absolutely batty. So that's reason number four. Reason number five. This vehicle has really heavy-duty shocks and struts and all of that good stuff to handle all the additional weight that you're going to be putting on with your massive towing hauls and, and things of that nature, and that's great but it just beats the stew out of you while you're driving down the road. If you're on a highway, it's great. It's wonderful. Drives, drives fantastic. By the way, that multifunction tailgate is awesome. I wish everybody had that. Um, but yeah, if you're coming down the, uh, if you're coming down the, the driveway and hit a few bumps, you feel every one of them. It bounces you around like crazy, and honestly, it kind of feels like you're out of control sometimes. So yeah. That's uh, reason number five. Reason number six. Can you guess? Take a look at this trip. And of those three numbers, which one stands out to you? Yeah, I knew this wasn't going to get good gas mileage. I understand that. It's a giant V8 made for, made for work. Again, made for work. Uh, but to get 8 to 10 to 12 miles per gallon all the time... Not working for me. Reason number six. And finally, reason number seven. See all this behind me here? In this stall, in this stall over here, and outside the barn uh, is our hay that we have stacked up for the winter for our cows. To pick up the hay, we went out to a great place, Chambers, uh, Chambers Hay. Um, look him up. He's got a, a cool Facebook page. Wonderful dude, uh, Todd Chambers. But... Anyway, uh, we pick up all of this hay, and what he does is, is uh, he allows you to pick them up from the field. So it saves you some money because you get to go out and do the work instead of him. So his tractor goes down, uh, bales up all the hay, poops them out of the back of the tractor, and then you drive down beside the hay bales and throw them into your trailer. So when we got there in my truck here to pick up, uh, to pick up our hay bales, uh, Angie jumped in the driver's seat to drive, and I walked beside the the trailer, and as we got up to a hay bale, I'd reach down and grab it, toss it in, we'd go up to the next one. And that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, Angie made it about 15 minutes into that and told me she would never drive this truck again. Um, it's too big. She can't see over the hood. Uh, the sensors in it. Um, it's got this really cool, I, I like it, I think it's a neat feature. It uh, buzzes your butt uh, whenever you get close to something that you're going to hit. So whenever she got too close to a hay bale 
or one of one of uh, Todd's dogs, you know, would just run in front of the. It would buzz and scare. Her. And uh, anyway, it is. It's a gigantic truck. It it is very difficult to drive. I'm not not lying. It's a it's a very difficult truck to drive. But I can't I can't own a vehicle uh, that she won't drive because you know you never know when you're going to need something. And uh, oftentimes uh, she's driving so that I can take care of things, you know, outside like hays and cows and things of that nature. So, so anyway, that's the last reason um, I'm going to drive up tomorrow morning and pick up my new vehicle uh, and bring it back. And uh, I'll have a follow up to this one, introducing Matt buys a new truck part two. I did it again. the way to trade it in on my drive out here to trade in the truck I remembered a uh, reason why I didn't like this uh, one uh, yet another reason why I don't like this particular truck is the cruise control uh, on every other vehicle that I've had with a cruise control it uh, you know you get to a hill and it just kind of goes into coast on the other side of the hill but in this one when it gets to a hill and you're going down the hill, it'll actually downshift to keep you lower uh, at speed to maintain the exact speed that you that you put in on the cruise control. Uh, that may not sound like a big deal, but you know there's a difference uh, in fuel economy when you're there's a difference in fuel economy between downshifting and just coasting. See, like right here, it just it just downshifted. So, anyway, yet another reason.